18 terabytes Mach 2, the Exos 2X18. Dual actuator. It sure looks like mechanical hard drives are going to be with us for the foreseeable future, but what if you could double the performance of a mechanical hard drive? That's what dual actuator drives do. Dual actuator drives are a long overdue technology. This is a SATA version of a dual actuator hard drive and 18 terabytes. 18 terabytes is sort of the floor. We're going to see capacities go even beyond this. This is actually a recertified drive I bought. These worked so well from Seagate. They sent me some SAS versions of, of these to review that uh, I decided to buy the SATA version as well because everybody was really excited. And then Seagate sent me some more dual actuator drives. So I actually have a bunch of these. We're going to take a look because using the SATA version of the drives, a little bit more interesting and a little different than the SAS version, this actually just shows up as one drive, unlike the SATA version. Uh, for those of you not in the know, you're like, what? The drive shows up as two drives? If you have a SAS version of the drive, that's actually really handy because then you can deal with the fact that you've got two actuators, two physical drives in one drive. You can handle that however you want in software. But for SATA drives, SATA doesn't have that option. So these drives uh, deal with that a little bit more cleverly. Let's discuss. Okay, so this shows up as one giant 18 terabyte hard drive, but if you create two partitions, you can access the partitions independently. Yeah, that's what I'm showing you here on Crystal Diskmark. We're running two Crystal Diskmark routines on this disk, on one single disk, and yet each one of these routines is able to retrieve 250 megabytes per second from each half of the disk. To make sure that you understand this, there's two sets of read write heads on two sets of platters inside the drive. It's not like two sets of read write heads can read all of the platters. The drives and the platters go together. So you have a front half of the drive partition and a back half of the drive partition and each half of the drive is basically independent. So you create two partitions and then if you create a RAID 0 of those two partitions you'll get double the performance. Turns out this is really easy to do on native Linux. We've got a shell script on the forum. If you're setting up, say, Linux MD, you can use Linux MD or LVM and tell it, hey, these are uh, dual actuator hard drives. Here is the geometry layout of the drive and it'll figure it out and then you're off to the races. The really exciting thing about that as a practical matter is if you, ha if you have a NAS uh, or network storage, it takes just three of these drives to saturate a 10 gigabit ethernet connection. Yeah, so if you're doing something like with the Synology DS1618 Plus that's got the new faster uh, drive in it, you're gonna have to go to the command line on the Synology to set this up. The Synology GUI does not yet support this, but I've got the full walkthrough on the level one forums. You just need to make sure that the uh, redundancy partitions are both on the same physical drive so that you can replace the drive. Uh, most Synology NAS have at least four bays, so you can just add, like if you have a failure, you just add a drive into the fourth bay and let it finish resynchronizing, and then you can pull the drive that you think died. And then that way, if you make a mistake, it, it doesn't really matter. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk dual actuators. Having dual actuators as a practical matter means that the time that it takes to read all of the information off of this disk is cut in half. It's half the time. It also means that for Seagate, <laughs> certifying and testing these drives also takes less time, half time-ish, which is nice for them. But the fact that we have a mechanical hard drive, a single mechanical hard drive will now saturate its six gigabit per second SATA link. SATA three, six gigabit, we've been stuck at that SATA speed forever. And now you're telling me that we have a single drive that is going to saturate that SATA link? I'm telling you, yes. Another interesting note is that the Linux kernel, as of I think 6.1 or 6.2, uh, added special support for dual actuator drives. It'll work if you have an older Linux kernel and a device based on an older Linux kernel, but specifically what it does is it reserves a space in the command queue. See, with SATA drives, you can send a bunch of commands to the drive and the commands will buffer on the drive, but the drive might service those commands out of order if it sees a more efficient way to do that because we're waiting on mechanical parts here. What the change to the Linux kernel does is it reserves some space in the buffer. So if you have a, a workload that really heavily loads one side of the drive, it leaves some buffer space in the command queue for the other side to try to keep both sides of the drive uh, loaded. 
The reason that you want to do that is because if the buffer were completely filled for one side of the drive, the other side of the drive would be idle. And farther down the queue, in terms of what's queued on the kernel side as opposed to what's queued on the drive, further down the queue, there might have been something the kernel could send to the drive to make the other side busy while the first side was pegged. So the fact that the kernel is now smart enough to say, mm, yeah, those LBA sectors can be busy at the same time as these other LBA sectors, it's nice to see those changes in the Linux kernel. Mechanical drives for bulk storage, not really going anywhere. It's also doubling in terms of IOPS. If you're thinking you can deploy a dual actuator drive for your games drive, well, media is probably a better choice or your home server, storage appliance, bulk storage, that kind of thing. Even the most gargantuan uh, Steam collection, you're gonna put, you're gonna want to put the games that you play on flash storage. You could archive your saves or, or do backups or something like that to mechanical storage, but there's still enough of a performance difference for random I.O. that you'll want flash as opposed to mechanical storage, but the fact that you can get 18 terabyte dual actuator hard drives, like this is a precision mechanical instrument for way less than $400. I get these recertified drives for like $200. Uh, that's pretty amazing. And the recertified drives still have over a one year warranty. I think that when I checked these online, uh, these still had 20 months of, of warranty remaining. Of course, the new drives have a much longer warranty because Seagate Exos. And the Exos line is designed for reliability and, and long term usage and the business use case, the enterprise use case. So, a little bit more stringent in terms of quality control and everything else. If you have something you want me to try with a dual actuator hard drive or a dual actuator configuration, let me know. I would be glad to do that. For me, I've been really enjoying the performance. The fact that three of these drives can saturate 10 gigabit ethernet means that I need to upgrade and have more machines on the 100 gigabit segment of my network. 10 gigabit is too slow. What a, what a time to be alive, a mechanical hard drive? A mechanical hard drive is able to seek and re retrieve information at over a billion bytes per second. We live in the future. Need more, more. All right, I'm Wendell, this level one. This has been a look at the SATA version of the dual actuator hard drives. If this sort of interests you, be sure to check out the other video that we did on the SAS version. If you have a 45 drive Storinator or other machine, a Linux machine that you're looking to set up with these, the SATA version of these drives do work just fine in those drives. Be aware that they do use a little bit more power. The older version of these drives, this is a second generation dual actuator. The first generation dual actuator used quite a bit more power. These use a little bit more power. But do be aware that some drive chassis have really done the math on the maximum power loading for mechanical hard drives. That's really the only rough spot you could run into. Some disc shelves weren't designed for the power load of SATA discs that need as much power as they do, but generally those disc shells are designed with like 10K SAS drives in mind, which use a lot more power than these. So it's probably fine, even if you're putting these in an, in an older enclosure. If you are doing something like planning to build a server around old enterprise gear, I would definitely recommend that you go with the SAS version of the drive, not SATA, for a whole host of reasons. None of which are to do with the fact that this shows up as one volume and you'll have to manage with LBA sector mapping or the script that we have on the level one forms. It's just that SAS and enterprise gear is generally a little uh, more robust, but the SATA version works just fine in desktop computers, desktop class NASes, like the SAS version generally doesn't work in, in a Synology NAS unless you have one of the enterprise Synology NASes, which is designed for SAS storage as opposed to SATA but you can still use dual actuator drives in your SATA enclosure. If you really don't want to mess with getting the absolute maximum performance out of dual actuator drives, they are plug and play. You can plug in and play into a desktop NAS. You just won't get the performance benefit. The drive will still run at, at half speed, basically. But if you're willing to hop into the command line, do some partitioning, do some, some setup from the command line, you can set these up so that they'll run at effectively 2x speed in your regular old desktop NAS. This is true for ASUS Store as well. ASUS Store is a little closer to a stock Linux configuration. And so setting these up for use in ASUS Store is also pretty straightforward. There's a guide for that on the level one forum, but dual actuator hard drives, if you're picking up a mechanical hard drive in 2023 and it's not dual actuator, mm, just let me put it another way. Double the performance of a mechanical hard drive, double, double performance mechanical hard drive. It's, you'll be able to read in the entire disk in less than 24 hours because it's 18 terabytes, you know, double the speed because 
when we're talking about 18 terabytes, 250 megabytes per second, it's gonna take a lot of seconds to read in 18 trillion bytes. I'm just saying. I'm one of this level one, signing out, and you can find me playing with more dual actuator hard drives. <laughs> All right, I'll see you later.